Hey guys, today I want to share a video with you that is from my private art community. Up until this week, it has been hosted on Patreon. However, I've just switched over to my own platform where I can host my online art community and it's just so much easier to navigate through all the different videos. There's over two years worth of demonstrations and tutorials on different styles and techniques and subject matters. The other amazing thing is that we have our own community. That means you can upload the sketches that you've done either in response to the videos in the community or even just ones that you've been doing and working on yourself uh, either at home or on location. You can share that with the community. You can get feedback from me if you want it. You can get feedback from the other people in the community. So and it's just all in one place. So this is absolutely what I've been working towards for quite a long time now. The stars have aligned and finally it's up and running. So it is called the Pretty Sketchy Club, a uh, bit tongue in cheek, but it's a pretty cool place to be. I'm really excited. Um, there's already members there. We're already chatting. People are already sharing their sketches. So it's really, really cool. So if you want to check it out, please do go and check out the link below to join the Pretty Sketchy Club. Um, for what you're getting, it's an absolute steal. You're getting two years worth of videos, which I'm adding to all the time. You're getting the community where you can share your sketches and you can geek out with other people about sketching stuff. There's also some free bonuses as well if you go and check out on the link and you get a 14 day free trial as well. So you can just come over and check out the videos and see whether it's for you or not. So this particular video is um, one that was the final part of a mini series that we did on collage and urban sketching. So integrating collage with urban sketching. Um, so we explored some different ways on how you might do that um, in different videos. And then this one is the final video in the series where I went out on location and combines the collage and urban sketching. So I really hope you enjoy watching it. If I do refer in the voiceover to anything to do with Patreon or the previous videos in the series, just know that they are now all hosted on the Pretty Sketchy Club and the link is in the description below for you to check it out. But otherwise, I really hope you enjoy this video. I hope it inspires you and sets off some light bulbs and maybe you'll even give this technique a go as well. Hey guys, so this is the video to end the collage series. Uh, I've had loads of fun with uh, doing this. I hope that you kind of inspired by uh, seeing these videos and you're gonna give it a go yourself. I know a few of you have. Um, but yeah, it's been really, really fun. So I wanted to end on one where we actually go on location. So I know a few of you might have seen the sketch on Instagram because I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. I just really wanted to share it because I was super excited by it. But anyway, we're st I'm starting at home and I've decided to do it on this uh, big uh, watercolor block of paper that I've got. There is another reason for that. I need to put up a few examples of my work at the urban sketching event we've got going on in Johannesburg in September. And um, the bigger the, the pieces are, the better really. So I was like, okay, well, if this one turns out nicely, then I can use it as one of my pieces to um, put, on the, uh, put on display at the event. So I've got this uh, plastic box, which I'm trying my best to keep some collage bits in. Otherwise my studio is just looking uh, a bit crazy with bits of paper all over the place. And I'm just hunting through, just looking for more papery materials to use rather than the kind of glossy magazine stuff. So I'm just sort of seeing what will work, collecting a few pieces together before I then start to arrange stuff on the page itself. So yeah, this is a watercolour block by Bockingford. I got it because um, someone wanted to uh, a commission from me and they wanted it um, at a bigger size than I usually do. So I've only used one page of this block and then yeah, just had it sitting on the shelf and I actually transported it over from the UK um, with all my other belongings and managed not to bend or damage it in any way, which was which was quite good. So I want to become less precious about using these kind of materials. I've got a couple of arches, arches, 
I never know how to say that brand, but the fancy brand, um, 100% cotton paper in, in a smaller size. I just need to, I just need to be bold. I just need to use it. Otherwise it's going to sit there forever and never be used. So it's like kind of pointless. Um, this one is Bockingford. So it's definitely not cotton paper. I think it's probably some kind of cellulose or wood pulp. I don't think it's got any cotton in it at all. It's still nice paper, you know, and for the commission I did, it was absolutely fine. And, um, you know, it's still a watercolor paper and it's still by quite a well-regarded brand. So I've got no complaints about this particular paper at all. Sorry if you do hear a bit of whirring in the background. My computer <laughs> is uh, processing me recording this and also watching the video back and doing my voiceover at the same time. So it's a bit like, ah, too much stuff. <laughs> So I'm going to not talk all the way through this video, and I know I've said that in other videos, and then I just talk all the way through it anyway, but I am going to not talk too much through this video, especially when we get to the on location part. I just want you guys to sit back and enjoy it, watch the process, watch how it comes together. These things are just so organic, and it's hard to be able to ever repeat something like this but hopefully you'll get a lot just from watching the process. And, you know, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing everything by, you know, like laying out these pieces and stuff. I'm like, okay, what, what looks cool? What looks good to me? I had a rough idea of where I was going to go and sketch on location, just because I feel like you do have to think, think these things through a little bit in terms of for me, having the camera out on the tripod and filming from a security uh, standpoint, um, just sitting myself down anywhere on the streets um, of Johannesburg is not going to work very well. But maybe in, in many cities that probably won't work very well, uh, especially as I was on my own. I didn't have anyone, you know, keeping an eye on things. So I just had to think it through a bit. I was like, where will there be a fun scene to draw and where I can film without worrying about someone running off with my camera? you know, all those kinds of, things. where can I see it? Where's like the weather going to be okay? Blah, blah, blah. Luckily yesterday, or sorry, Monday when I filmed this, uh, it was a really nice weather day. I did look at the weather to see when would be good to do this. And I, yeah, I decided here at Monte Casino, which is a place I come basically every week anyway, I come and sketch with um, some other members of Urban Sketches Johannesburg just because we want to sketch more often. And as you can see, even though it's a casino, it's got some really nice looking um, buildings. It's all done in the style of the Italian uh town or village of the of the same name so you know it was like okay it's a no-brainer to come and sit here lots of layers of buildings to draw and it was safe for me to film as well I was a little worried that the security people they're a bit um what's the word enthusiastic sometimes so I was a bit worried they were gonna not let me do this but no one came and spoke to me so it was fine uh, I think they don't mind the sketching but as soon as you start getting out all this equipment and tripods and whatnot they're like what are you doing <laughs> and in fact the security guard on the way in you you know have to have metal detection and they rifle through your bags and whatnot and she was like oh uh what are you what are you doing with all this stuff I was like oh I'm just uh just going for a meeting just just talking to someone <laughs> I didn't want to tell her what I was doing because like, in case they said no we have been moved moved off from sketching certain places in the casino so yeah anyway all that's to say is that I found this nice spot and I've sat myself down and I'm starting to yeah it took me a while to figure out how I was gonna approach this I didn't even know what to do here I'm using a um, black uh, Nero pencil so it's not one that really can be erased but I thought oh, maybe the sketchy lines will will look kind of cool. But then I did change my mind. I was like, I'm not sure I want to draw out this whole scene and then, you know, maybe add some bits in ink and maybe some shapes and color. Yeah, I was I was struggling a bit, but I thought, you know what? I actually just going to draw this whole thing in, in pen. So I started drawing this tower in, in the black pencil, not graphite pencil, but like a, a matte black pencil. And then, yeah, I decided that I just didn't want to do that. And in fact, I was just going to go for it with my pen and just draw the whole thing and, you know, not worry too much if 
uh, some of my lines aren't right or going in the right direction or all that kind of thing. So I actually did want to use my Fude uh, fountain pen with the variable line weight, more in the style of Jim Butler, who kind of was the urban sketcher slash artist that kind of started all of this off in my head because he does really nice kind of free flowing contour drawing with like different line weight and stuff. And I looked in my bag and I was like, I don't have that pen with me. <laughs> How annoying. Okay. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to use this uh, platinum preppy pen that I've been using a lot lately because I just really like it. Very comfortable to draw with, really like the line weight on it. And I'm just going to go for it. So at the moment, I'm just drawing the tower in, which is the part that I did start with a pencil. But then uh, after that, I kind of just go with the flow. As promised, I'm not going to talk all the way through this, but I just want to um, point out a few things. So, I mean, obviously I did just start with the tallest thing in that scene, which was the tower. And it's not necessarily in the completely correct proportion with the rest of the buildings, but I don't really mind it. This is kind of a, I don't know, like almost a cartoony slash it's not a realistic take on this scene it's just more of an impression um i don't get all of the buildings exactly right or exactly in the right place but when you're dealing with a busy scene like this and there's so many buildings it actually doesn't matter too much because you just get the overall vibe of the place that's totally fine by me i i wanted to come out of this with a really fun piece of art that is based on where I was sitting. <laughs> so that was my goal for, for this. So I'm just going to work right to left and just sort of draw the buildings until I come up against another one and then start drawing that one in and just see where I end up. So in terms of composition, I haven't planned it out or anything. And I do end up moving a few things just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so things aren't exactly where they, they are in real life, but that doesn't fuss me um, at all. So it's something quite liberating about drawing straight in pen. I'm not hesitating too much over my lines. I'm not doing sketchy lines with my pen. I'm just drawing bold, confident shapes. You know, if they're not in quite the right place or at quite the right angle, then that's not going to worry me too much. Like these arches here on the right, they're not exactly even or correct, but I, you know, I don't mind. I think it suits this kind of style. I just wanted to, to draw quickly. I didn't want to make this a really laboured kind of illustration. I just wanted to draw quickly and just get a sense of fun in this scene. It was really fun to actually draw at this size. Thinking about it, I suppose drawing over a double page of A4, it, like in an A4 sketchbook, would basically be this, but um, I don't think I've even done that, to be honest with you. I think I always draw pretty much at A5 size, or the book I'm using at the moment is like a square size, so it's quite long, but I don't think I've ever... I might be wrong, but I don't think I've ever done an urban sketch with a like an A4 portrait sketchbook. I do have A4 portrait sketchbooks, but I mainly use them for like demos and stuff like that. So yeah, it was really nice to draw it at this size and just have so much space to play with. On the flip side, it can look very bare and basic if you don't put quite a lot of detail in because your shapes are quite big. And yeah, I definitely felt towards the end I was lacking like some texture and some actual details in, in the buildings because um, I'd left them quite basic, so, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that point. Obviously with drawing in pen, I need to make sure that I'm drawing things that are in front first before 
drawing the things behind it so that I don't overlap. But I actually don't mind things overlapping, but if you do that, then, like, I mean, drawing things over the top of other things that are behind it, if you do that, I think you really have to commit to it, and then you have to kind of go with that style, so you know here I'm drawing those umbrellas over the top of those arches but I know I'm going to come in and colour them in probably with a paint marker um, so I'm not too worried because it's going to just go right over the top. And I think at this stage I was like, ah, oh, a lot of my collage pieces are above where I'm drawing. Um, and I was like, hmm. But then I realised there's quite a lot of buildings, layers of buildings in the background. So I was like, okay, maybe it'll be okay. But I was initially a bit put off that a lot of the collage was in what I deemed the sky area. So I was like, hmm, this is kind of like not the point. But yeah, I do... I do kind of make up for it and that's when I do move a few of the buildings in the background just to kind of accommodate some of the collage pieces but I think that's okay I think that's they're still there they're just shifted over a little bit so um, that's what I mean in terms of it's not entirely accurate to what I was seeing and that building on the very left over the brown collage piece I did scoot that in a little bit further into the scene um, but again totally okay to do that. It's your art, it's your sketch, you're allowed to do whatever you want, it's fine. And I've got this black brush pen out and um, I'm feeling like if I put some nice graphic black areas in here, that's also going to make it look really fun. So I did like drawing at this size and this pad is quite nice but it was really hurting my hand to to kind of hold it so um, you know if this was something I was going to do on a more regular basis working at this size I think I would consider even having uh, some kind of easel uh, like the ones that people make from uh, camera stands and that kind of thing although <laughs> it does get a bit more cumbersome like the more equipment you have to take out of you I do like the idea of just grabbing a sketchbook and a pen and just going to sketch um, so I guess it wouldn't wouldn't always sketch at this size I would kind of you know use different sizes of books and stuff like that and maybe when I knew the situation was going to be okay to take an easel then I would do that because obviously, you know, if I'm trying to film as well, so then I'll have a tripod for filming and then I'll have a camera and then I'll have a tripod for my easel and it's just like, <laughs> in my head, a bit ridiculous. But then, you know, that's kind of what I do in terms of my job or profession is filming these kinds of things and showing people these kinds of things. So I guess it makes sense. I am using a flat brush for um, the uh, this part of the adding the watercolour. Um, it's just very nice to use a flat brush in architecture so you get some nice uh, straight edges. So I've used that kind of English red there across those roofs, just tying them all in together. They might not necessarily be that exact colour, but it's they are sort of the same colour. So I want to keep my, my colours as concise as possible. So I'm using the same kind of colour in the tower and then a bit more of a diluted, sort of more calmer version of it in some of the buildings in front. I think I've said it in a previous video, just trying to keep the colours to a minimum if possible, just to kind of bring in the cohesion, uh, especially in something that's quite quite crazy in terms of uh, just the collage and the drawing and stuff. I'm really liking those pops of pink with the tissue paper and I'm really liking um, with the collage like overlaying the kind of translucent paper with like receipts that have got words on them or something like that. I really like that effect. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I think that's the thing I'm really enjoying with the collage is like the layering 
and the textures as well. So I did a bit more ripping of the pieces rather than cutting on some of these. And I think that's actually more interesting than cutting with the scissors. So I was enjoying that, uh, bringing in the texture and yeah, overlapping the pieces and stuff like that. I just thought it was really fun. And I'm trying not to be too scared with adding my like really bold shadows in so that that's very central building. Um, I've added a color called Moon Glow, which is like a purpley gray kind of color. And that's, you know, I'm just being bold with the shadows. I am being careful by painting the watercolor over this kind of tissue paper material. Um, it seems to be okay with just a quick wash of color over the top. So that's, that's okay. So I initially thought about drawing some of the uh, buildings in the background with a brown pencil. Then I realized I have this uh, Ecoline uh, pen. It's just one that I carry around with me. And that was in quite a nice color for the buildings right behind the ones that I've just drawn. So I added that in with the Ecoline pen. Just because it's nice and easy, nice and quick, and you can get like a nice flatter colour than than maybe you can with watercolour. Um, some materials are just quicker than adding watercolour, so that's why I kind of bounce between certain things. And then I came up with this idea of adding the background buildings with this blue watercolour pencil. So I think I did one building like that in the previous sketch. But I, I was like, hmm, this could work quite nicely or it could just look a bit odd and I'm not really sure which way it's going to go. But if it does look odd, I'm sure there'll be something else that I can do to kind of rescue it. So yeah, I didn't want the background buildings to, to take away from the foreground, but I did want them to be there in terms of layering and also to help me incorporate some of those other collage pieces that I was a bit worries that were just sort of stuck in the sky and weren't going to be incorporated into the sketch at all, which is kind of like not the point. So that that tall tower, I did just move it over to the right slightly just so I could work with the collage pieces that were in on the paper. So I've mapped them out in lines, but I wasn't really sure where to go from there. So I've bounced over to adding these um, umbrellas here with a with an intense pencil, which I'm going to go over with this water brush, um, just because I don't like the pencil marks. I want it to be like a smoother color. Water brushes are so convenient for adding little bits of colour, little bits of watercolour or activating watercolour pencils, but for laying down bigger, smoother areas of watercolour, they can uh, be a bit tricky. But I always carry one, I think they are super useful. I actually found that, that it worked really nicely on the 100% cotton paper of the Etcher Accordion book that I was using when I was travelling around New Zealand, just because the paper the watercolour just naturally goes down so much nicer on 100% cotton paper, so the brush actually wasn't so much of a problem. So that was an interesting, uh, interesting revelation. 
And I've used this light blue Posca marker in um, a bit around the sign on the tower. So I did want to repeat that colour. So even though the umbrellas in this scene aren't necessarily this colour, I have made them this colour just for the purposes of the sketch, basically. And then also we've got the same colour, but with the watercolour pencil in the background with the layers of, of the building. So I just think it's nice that you've got this light blue colour repeated around the sketch, as well as those pink pops of the tissue paper. I think those colours just work really nicely together. And now I've got my fatter fountain pen out just to add thick lines into certain areas. I really want to bring those buildings in the foreground. I really want to bring them forward um, and really create a sense of distance between those buildings and the ones in the background that I'm yet to address properly. And again, I just want to add some nice deep shadow areas um, where I'm seeing real dark bits. And where I'm painting now, it creates a nice big continuous shape with the building next to it as well, so I think that kind of works. I'm trying my best to keep my uh, pad on camera <laughs> and I was sitting on this stone wall and my and my bum was so numb <laughs> but I'm uh, and my wrist was hurting from holding up this uh, it's quite heavy pad after a while so yeah I'm doing my best to make sure I keep everything on camera I think there might be one or two tiny little sections where I might be slightly off but otherwise uh, I think we're all good So switching to the Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen, they just really are so convenient just to add in some shadow areas and just some bold colour. I mean, I know it's great, but like some bold areas and it's just so quick. They're so quick to use. So they really are one of my favourite um, art tools, favourite discoveries um, just for adding in, you know, areas of shadow or just neutral greys wherever I need them really. They're just such a quick tool to add a bit of extra dimension with. Uh, yeah, they're really fun. And I wouldn't want to colour in any large areas with these because they do have a translucent nature. They just end up making quite, you know, it just looks very streaky. So um, I use them just to add small areas of shade and dimension to things. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't use them for colouring in large uh, shapes or areas if I can help it. And I decided to add a bit of a swish of pink in the ground just to tie in those pink bits of tissue paper really and I'm uh, quite happy with that, I think that works. And I decided this area over here wasn't quite dark enough, I just wanted to make it a bit darker. I 
Okay, so now we're going to get on to addressing the buildings in the background. So what I'm doing, what I've decided to do is color in any areas of the building that are in shade. So generally like one wall of the building is in shade and one is light. So I'm just coloring in the, the shadow area with the pencil and then activating it with my paintbrush. And then under any ledges of roofs or any windows, I'm making those solid blue as well. And in that way, it's just making quite a nice graphic background. And I, th I think it really works. I'm really happy I decided to do this with the, with the blue pencil. I think you can see how without this background information the scene would have been quite flat and almost too simple and kind of boring or well, just too simple really uh, there's not enough details going on really in the in the foreground so um, it definitely needed this this stuff in the background So just adding a few areas with the white uh, paint marker now, so like the name of that restaurant on the top there, a couple of the umbrella poles, and then switching to the yellow paint marker to do the sign on the front of this building, and then the red one just to do some of the other stuff there. And just adding a few bits and bobs that I've missed really, any kind of extra information. And I am aware again that the, the front buildings, they don't have as much detail in them or texture as I would like. So I'm just sort of figuring out what to do with that. Um, so I decided to add just a few kind of cobblestone kind of information. Um, a lot of the buildings don't have, they're, they don't, they're kind of smoothish, they don't have this kind of brick stone texture on them. So I'm putting it on the tower there, which, which you can see the bricks very, very lightly on. Uh, and then I'm adding it to this foreground wall, which isn't there, but I think it just needed something there because it just felt like too big a shape of of nothing. I just really wanted to add a bit of texture in. And then just finally using the white gel pen just to add in these railings on the top balcony of this restaurant here. And that is my sketch guys. I decided to leave it there. I stepped away from it for a bit, looked at it and I was like no I'm, I'm actually really really happy with it. I did decide maybe I should try and put some people in. There weren't really many people around but just put some people and some table and chairs information in the bottom left there but it, it wasn't really showing up too much and I was like Do you know what it's actually fine I like it how it is so I'm not going to worry too much about that so here you can see my little studio setup <laughs> this is the wall that I've been sitting on and this is the finished piece which I'm actually really happy with and I think it looks really really fun I was worried for quite a while <laughs> <laughs> during this piece but it all came together in the end and I'm very happy. I hope this has been really interesting for you guys to watch. I really hope that you do give this technique a go in your own work. Please do let me know if you do and please do consider sharing with, with me on email or in, on Instagram if you're there if you want to but I would love to know what you're up to and if you've uh, been inspired by this particular technique. So thanks very much for watching guys. Do let me know if you've got any questions or comments and I will see you in the next video.